Hello everybody and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. We are in the thick of it today. We are about to do a lot. Not only do we have the thing we're going to be doing with Fang, but we have our mushrooms. We've also got just like a lot of stuff. There's a lot of different things we're going to be trying to do, trying to keep up with. Um, luckily we have a good amount of money. Um, so we can work on that. We've also got a reroll, which I think will be very helpful in helping Fang. I'm just a little nervous to start that. Uh, so I might wait a month or a cycle. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, first, let's feed the cat as you must. And end cycle. Also, the reason I have another spore, because I think I only got one last time when I reloaded the game to start recording. Uh, it- oh, I forgot to eat. Uh, when I reloaded the game, it did not save that, so I had to, uh, do that. Um, let's- yeah, let's buy some food. There we go. Alright, we need some spores, so we might as well do that. And we're also gonna see what we need to do for Fang right now. Haifa commune, the wastes. That's another thing. Is it over here? Where was it again? Bang! Oh, right! It's this. Okay. Slotting the first swarm will allow Fang access into the facility. You need to be ready to give this all your attention. I'm gonna wait. Just one cycle. Just one. Uh, first things first. Let's, uh... Collect some spores. There we go. We got some spores. Uh, let's take this over and we'll do this first. Spores. I've got four spores, but it's okay. I don't need more. I only need four. Okay. And one. Action complete. How long is it going to take? Okay, so we've got a few cycles for that, so I'm glad I started that right now. Is there anything else we should start? Side rail bridge, empty container, dock, merchant freighter. Um, I can buy a fragmine, a fra fragmind, fragment, but I don't think I will. What about here? The salvage sortie, they're busy with that. Ort exchange, um... Those are better rolls, let's see. Um... We could probably do this right now. Hang on. We'll do this just because it's positive or neutral. Yeah? Helped a destitute man in the timber kitchens, where they feed him freely. You stay behind with the chefs and sample the dishes. Uh... Nice. I am full on food. Alright, alright, alright. Now that that's started, I can't really hide anymore. So let's start this. Slot the Ripper Worms. The worm tunnels in and starts looping data through the node. Conway facility opens up to you. Godspeed, Fang. Oh god! Oh god, oh god, oh god. As you slot the worm, a thread jumps out of the facility. It unspools in front of you, releasing its data like ink and water. Sleeper. Fang's voice crackles through. Moving in. Nodes, then ports. A whir of interference. Slot the worms. Okay. Timer starts now. Stay safe. The thread dissipates. You're on your own for now. Oh god, so do I... Oh, okay. So we need to... We need to have things ready for this. Thank god I have the reroll. Okay, it's working. Next one. Okay, so if we... We have six cycles to do this, right? So as long as we... Keep up. We should be good. Okay. Do either of these need a 3B? Okay, that's a 5. What about this one? That's a 4. We're gonna have to wait until next cycle. But we have time, right? We have time? Service dock. 
What's going on there? Fang's progress. Ah, Fang's terminal shows you how far he's progressed to the facility, the deeper the better. Conway extraction. The timer on the terminal shows you how many cycles you have left to get the data you need. Come on, Fang. All right. So we do have time, just not a lot of time. Let's go to bed. <laughs> Wait, I have one more thing. What should I use it for? Maybe to explore the Haifa commune? Could work the grow beds. Uh, both give us the, about the same amount, so let's... Please, no negative. Yay! As you see, as after seeing you prepare food, the grow bed workers invite you to share a meal with them. The conversation flows warmly and freely. We might be able to finish that next time, too. Alright. <laughs> Hopefully that's a good sign. Oh, it's still cloudy over here, though. Alright, so we can't do anything with that then. Let's just go to bed. <laughs> we have to- we have work tomorrow. And Emphasis Mushroom should be done tomorrow. I hope- unless we d don't get the ones he needs. Uh, in which case... Let me self-repair a bit. I have the money, I just don't want to use it, I'm lazy. Sleepy time! Okay. Okay. Might need to re-roll. Uh, let's go check on the shrooms. <laughs> we do have a four, though. We can use a four. I won't re-roll unless I have to. Okay, how's our aviary going? Harvest mushrooms! Uh, the fruiting bodies are appearing. Reels are easy to find, but matasuke and other stranger types will require effort. Take your pick. Once you've harvested, you'll have to grow more. Okay, so we'll use our good ones for that. But first things first, this is important. Let's use a four. Bypass. Extract data. All right. We've got a port location. Oh, we need to get this one, too. All right. Then... Let me first... Gather some mushrooms. I don't want to- I will not waste these, because these are good rolls. So let's harvest some good mushrooms with them. You carefully pick out the best developed caps from the mulch, especially fascinated by the aroma of the club-like bodies you discover. Matasuke caps. Nice. Uh, alright. Let's do this one as well. I've got so many mushrooms. Nice! That's uh, how many we need. Carefully pick out the best developed cap from the mulch, especially fascinated by the aroma. Alright, we're gonna have to grow some more later, but we'll worry about that in a second. Let's go and have a nice moment with uh, our buddy, our pal, before we leave. We still have six cycles. We still have six cycles. Okay, where is Emphis? You just needed two. Nice. Can I sell these to anyone else? Emphis inhales the deep autumnal aroma of the Matsuke, the Matsutake caps. He seems impressed. Okay, how long is that gonna take? Okay. Matsuke prep. Reroll! <gasps> we got a five! That's exactly what we needed, and we can use the other one at the Haifa commune! Let's see. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Bypass, baby! We only have two more ripper worms. We're doing good. Okay. Okay. Put in that ripper worm. The ripper worm fires the drone's network link. Now they can't report anything. Nice! Oh, we got three. Okay. Do any of them require a... Okay, that one requires one. What about you? Oh, God. I see. <laughs> And that's a five. All right. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. We'll use this right away. Three nodes, final port, then Fang will be in. Not much time left. All right. We've got that. Did that screw up our time at all? Okay, no. We still have plenty of time. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Did I feed the cat? I don't think I fed the cat. I think I'm stressed out. <laughs> Do not stress. Feed the cat and decompress. There we go. Anything new from the cat? Not yet. We will end the cycle. <sighs> I'm calm. Okay, we got the five roll, but we didn't get the, uh... 
the one roll that we need, so I'm going to, uh... I'm gonna eat some food at the Mingi Express. Uh, and then... Go, and then we'll go over there, do the five, and re-roll. We just need one of the, the, all the way. Across the greenway. That one? You know, the five credits doesn't do much, that one, but it makes me feel better. Damn it! Alright, next time, next time. Uh, let's use the last of this on the Haifa commune. Yeah! I'm a Haifa member! Whoa! Communist noun, someone who joins a commune. Hell yeah. Hyphodom, commune sleeping quarters, Rico, commune botanist. Oh, hello. You head down to the Hypha compound, following a blue painted line that is labeled laboratories. The member you were assigned to work with told you they asked to see you, but you still have no idea what about. The line takes you to a blue door and through to a glass roof chamber where a network of stems and leaves filter the sunlight coming through the ceiling, casting the whole chamber into a strange yellow green. Peaceful, isn't it? Distracted by the green, you miss the woman standing at a lab bench, camouflaged by the dappled light. Welcome to my sanctuary, she smiles. Come, let's talk, she says, and beckons you closer. What is this place? Here? These were processing centers for agriculture of the old corporate station. She offers a hand to shake. I'm Rico. I run the botany program at Haifa. Botany program? Yes, the plants in the Greenway are vital to Haifa's continued existence. It's important we understand them. She lifts a tiny sample jar. Yellow spores dance inside. Haifa lives off the land of the Greenway. It's what allows us to live like we do. No one here pays or is paid. We sleep here, we feed each other, we work for each other. Rico walks away from the bench and waves for you to follow. She opens a small door and leads you down a glass corridor surrounded by vivid green. All this, she says, gesturing at the overgrowth. It's a kind of miracle. She looks at you with bright eyes. What do you think usually happens to plants on stations like this when they're abandoned? They keep growing? If only that was true. No, they do not. They dry up, and then they die. She leads you left at the crossroads. But here, they endured. She smiles to herself. Actually, no. They thrived. You look at the bright tendrils wrapped around the metal frames of the corridor. They look dominant, strong, like they're taking control of this place. Rico continues. Of course, Solheim tried to create a stable biosphere here, patchworking the surface with gardens and algae tanks that feed into the network of microbial reclamation systems. But the Greenway was always envisioned as extractive, a place from which the harvest is removed and sold to those living on the station, not a closed loop. For this reason, when the collapse came, the Greenway should have gone with it. Erlin himself was so convinced of it at fir that his first colony never even came here to try and reclaim it. The Eye instead relied on outside favors and influences, shipments from the inner system and small-scale agricultural systems like kelp and fungal farm stacks. And yet here we are, among growth and decay, a biosphere flourishing. When Haifa came here, we expected to find only vacuum-dried stalks and leaves, and perhaps some fungal colonies hidden in the mulch. But we found a jungle. With this, Rico hits a button on the wall and leads you through a large pair of double doors into a huge, impossible chamber. It's every kind of green, from the pale algae tanks to the dark vines that surround them. It is wet, too, a rarity on the eye. Condensation clouds the light from the high glass roof and gathers on the shiny, broad leaves of shrubs. Did you do this? She smiles. Oh no, not me. Rico turns to you, visibly excited by the room you're standing in. It doesn't make sense, but in many ways the system has stabilized. Unlike the farm stacks closer to the gap, who need input to support their meager output, this place runs itself. Perhaps Solheim managed something new here. Perhaps they tweaked the plants, or built new systems buried deep below us. Or perhaps their collapse caused some fortunate cascade, an unlikely chemical reaction within the biosphere. That's what I'd like you to help me find out. She turns to you, her forehead wet with dew. 
Me? Yes, you. Rico sits on the railing. These halls run deep, sleeper, and I'm getting old. She stamps her foot on the metal grating of the walkway. Whatever is causing this, it's to be found in the groves deep in the greenway. Haifa won't spare anyone for an expedition. It's too dangerous and unnecessary, they say. I can make the case, but I can't get the votes. You sleepers are hardy beings, I know that much. And you can speak to the eye, uncover its secrets, in ways I never can. She holds out an arm so you can help her stand. Bring me samples, spores, seeds, blooms. I can help in them, I can grow them in the lab and study them. The deeper they are found, the better. I'll do it. I'll try. I'd love to learn more about this place. Maybe we could get rid of the cloud covering it. Thank you, she smiles, and thank you for listening. Rico leads you back to the huge chamber and up through the passages. She's a little slower now and stumbles on the steps. You help her where you can. It's good to have new blood in the commune, she says. Many of us have been here a long time, and few come through. She settles back on her bench in the lab, stretching her legs. You go to leave. Come back if you find something, sleeper, she calls. There are discoveries to be made. And you follow the blue line back up out of the compound, all the time thinking of that impossible, magical green. How lovely! I like her! That's really cool! I'll definitely be helping them out. Oh, and we've got a dorm! Can we just sleep here whenever we want? Oh, nice! I mean, I do have to go back to my uh, squatting house because I have a cat. I don't. The cat does not follow. Oh, I do have spores. That's another thing we can deliver. Nice. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. Before we go to sleep, we'll feed the cat again. I also need to. I'm gonna eat so that I'm full because I don't know if food has something to do with it, but I feel like it does. We need to do this. I have been avoiding this because <laughs> it scares me. All right, at the times, it seems the Tangled Systems will never be laid straight, but linkage by linkage, your team progresses. Yeah, so we we need to start working on that, too, because that's going to take a while. All right, what can we steal? Nice. <laughs> Just practicing for the Ripper Worm, the last Ripper Worm. There we go. Take that and immediately sell it. Take that, bada bing, bada boom. Alrighty, daddy. And food, food, food. Is Emphis here? No, he's gone completely. All right. Um, where else can I buy food? Can I not get food? Okay, we have one more day for bliss. Can I buy food up here? Spacer meal. There we go. We got food. Let's go back down and go to bed. We'll feed the cat in the morning. I'll remember, I swear. We just need one circle. One circle. One circle. Well, probably more than that. Okay, I'm flickering. That's not good. God damn it! Let's feed the cat. And we'll go to the waste and we'll get some scraps if we can. Oh! Oh, hello, Moritz! Sleeper, Moritz is waiting for you on the way out. How have you been? I've been busy, I've really been busy. I see, I see. He nods. Well, I'll get right to it then. Bliss sent me down. We've scored another contract and she needs your help. Got it? That's the message. He pauses. Look, I, I know the last time the payment didn't come through, but you did good work. Bliss knows that. That's no problem, I'm selling people's data. <laughs> I'm, I'm America! Okay then, he pauses. She's doing her best, you know? I know. He nods. See you up there. Mortz turns and strides off, leaving you in the corridor. Time to help Bliss. Maybe this time you think to yourself, it'll work out. Did I feed the cat? I'll do it again. <laughs> this, this, this cat is gonna be so fat just because I keep forgetting if I've fed them or not. Okay, I need... Should I get a thing... I mean, it could probably self-repair, but, ah. Uh, is it worth it to just roll right now? It might be. God damn it! God! <laughs> I 
Something's gotta give. Okay, don't do that. Uh, wait, you know what we will do, though? Let's, uh, let's get some spores for the lady. This is, this is nerve-wracking. We are so close. <laughs> Okay, we'll harvest some more mushrooms, why not? There we go. Uh, and now we need to get some more spores. Oh, nice! Putting those sample collecting to good use! We could get an upgrade! Achievements! The 100%er within me is happy. Alright, what upgrades do we have left? Agent nodes give double rewards. Keep two dice even when condition is breaking. Let's get this. Uh, and then we only need one more, f and then we're fully upgraded. Hell yeah. Uh, um, let's do this. Give you the spores, and then I can start putting some in my ape aviary, apiary? I don't remember. There we go. How you doing, Rico? Sleeper. Rico, Rico greets you without so much as a looking up from her work. I have some of yours. Come see. She beckons you over to a heavyweight-looking console wired to a series of specimen jars, some of which contain your spores. What does it say? The spores you have here are a real cocktail, a selection of types for th from within the groves, but I've been able to isolate a few. She taps one of the specimen jars. Here we have Tricholoma Matsutake. Rico breezes through the Latin and Japanese pronunciation as if it was nothing. A species Solheim somewhat modified for use on the station. She brings up a panel on her console showing all a chemical composition, all gradiated bars and obtuse acronyms. This is the composition of the Solheim modified Matsutake spores. Uh, modified? Yes, every species on the eye is a tweaked variant of Solheim's, of course, but that's not the point. Rico brings up another panel, identical in layout, but with wildly different colors and num numbers. You see, this is what your Matsutake spores look like. They aren't the same? That's the conclusion, yes. Rico glances at the specimen jar as if it might have something to add. They are fundamentally the same, but they carry difficult, different chemicals, different signals. She leans back in size. Solheim may have introduced their own tweaked versions in the beginning, but the groves have, and still are, affecting them. Affecting them how? It's hard to tell without samples of fully grown mushrooms. She meets your eye, and herein lies the problem. She moves to the another desk where two trays sit side by side. The first contains nothing but plant mulch. The second you smell before you even look at it. The pungent aroma of fruiting matsutake like rotten, sodding overalls laced with an edge of spice. The matsutake here are grown from Solheim stalks, pulled from a spore vault in this complex, she winks. They are delicious, by the way. She sets them aside. The empty tray is germinated with the spores you collected. No activity, no germination, nothing. But the groves are full. Yes, they are. She looks at you directly, and you suddenly realize how much she is enjoying this. So here is our puzzle, sleeper. Spores from the grove won't grow in the lab. But gathering fruiting bodies from the groves is too unpredictable. We need to grow a fruiting body from some of these spores so we can track it, understand it. In short, I need you to become a mushroom farmer. Ah! I'm way ahead of you. Rico looks impressed. Well, well, an eager mycologist. I'd have never guessed. I assume you set yourself up in the aviary. I've been eyeing that place up for its proximity to the groves. Bring me whatever grows, not just Matsutake. There's more than a couple of variants in there, so I'll need plenty of samples. She plucks a Matsutake cap from the tray. These little things are reflections of their conditions, their smells, their taste, their chemistry. It all derives from the conditions of their growth. She smells the cap. Enough of these, and we'll have a picture of what is happening here, of the ways in which this biosphere is modifying itself, or maybe modified, whichever the case may be. Rico pops the Matsutake cap into her mouth, taking you by surprise. Don't worry, sleeper, she says, softly chewing. If this turned out to be a dead end, I won't. I'll make sure that not a single mushroom will go to waste. There's that, at least. I don't think it will be a dead end, though. This place is very curious. Luckily for you, I 
have a lot of shrooms. Uh-oh. Did I screw something up? I might have. That's an oopsie on my part. I think I fucked something up right there. Do you see that at the bottom? Oopsie doodles. Uh, I'm gonna get, uh, I'm gonna buy, we're gonna ignore the fact that I glitched something and we're gonna get this. Cause I have scrap, but it's not gonna be enough. Uh, and then we're going to go up, get some food. That way we have as many chances as possible tomorrow. Okay, food. Leave? Uh... Oh, right! Uh, how long do we have? We have time. Fragile biome! Oh god, this is a scary one! We're gonna wait on that. Because they're, they're, somebody could die right now, and that's what I'm a little bit more worried about. No offense to Bliss, but... Can I rob anyone? Yeah. Nice, now we get more because of that thing. Hell yeah. Alright, bed, 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 bed. Bedtime. Okay, self-repair, sunbathe, inject, stabilizer. Do that. And sleep. <gasps> yes! I didn't say a goddamn word. Let's go. <laughs> I'm so sorry it took me so long, Fang. Oh my god, but we still have one more Ripper Worm. How many are gonna be behind this one? It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, the Ripper Worm chews through camera controls. The moment it does, a thread shoots from the facility. Oh, we're done! A thread from the facility cuts through the cloud like a hairline crack of light. That's it. The final layer of security broken. Somewhere, buried in the depths of the station, Fang is in control. He's slicing into the camera circuits and piping out the results. The thread flickers and unravels into an image, a scene. Two figures in a room, one sat, the other pacing. The pacing figure resolves into Harden, the unmistakable superior posture, the shock of gray hair. The second figure's features don't seem to resolve. They're vague, unformed. A problem with the data, perhaps? You look closer. Then, you see it. The figure is a proxy. Perhaps you should have expected it from Conway, a corporation whose very existence is owed to automation. The proxy is, is a machine, designed to be piloted by remote connection. Someone elsewhere is in the system puppeting it with their own body, speaking so it may speak. The proxy sits impassively, or the Conway executive that is piloting them does, from a distant safety of some ship or orbital colony, perhaps. We can move forward, there is no doubt, Hardin is saying. The reclamation teams are almost ready, and after that I will make the declaration. Nothing has to change. The proxy leans forward, its movements stilted, uneven, as if its body was being refracted through water. But things must change, Hardin. We need further assurances. I have been informed of a breach in one of the closed networks in the low end. You have been careless. Hardin waves the accusation away. We have been stretched. A breach was detected, yes, but no data of value was lost. Our board is concerned, Hardin. A drop in our value would be unwelcome at this time. The proxy leans back, its posture dominant. If the pro reclamation of A1 is contested, then we could be drawn into a compromising legal position. Hardin approaches the proxy. There will be no contest. Not in Solheim, who cannot muster at defense. Not from Haven Age, who will fall into line below me. He crouches in front of the seated figure, eye to eye. And the people of this station's refugees, gangs, spacers, all either opportunists or degenerates. Haven Age is no longer strong, no longer united. No one here believes in Erlen's vision, nor has the strength to enact it. I sat across from him at the negotiating table. He was forceful, eager, weakened by his ideological convictions, perhaps, but a great man nonetheless. This place no longer deserves to bear his name. 
The eye is crippled. It cannot survive. It is a ruin filled with squatters and outlaws. They will be lucky if it still spins in a hundred cycles. Harden stands. You will move forward with the reclamation, because otherwise you will lose your advantage in the system. Without your advantage, you will lose claims on the remaining pala pa pala pala palladium? <laughs> Without the palladium, your factories will go dark. He pauses. Do I need to continue? One moment, came a response from the proxy, and its head drops it into its chest. Harden steps back and paces once more, awaiting the discussion taking place elsewhere in the system. You watch Harden as he paces, as he considers his future. What goes on within a mind like that, in the mind of a man who would burn all those around him for a path to some imagined golden end? The proxy lifts its head. We are happy to proceed. We will legally claim the station formerly known as Solheim A1 as salvage within six cycles. Haven ages to assist with the transport of the illegal residents to Conway housing and labor facilities. The proxy jetters to its feet. Conway will also claim 70% of raw output to the reclamation process after losses have been accounted for. Harden nods. I accept. The proxy reaches out to shake his hand like a marionette, then the recording loops. You watch it play out a second time, gripped by a horrified fascination. There is a bluntness to the conversation, to its blatant disregard for humans as anything other than objects. Things to be moved, to be used, to be fed into structures, crushed in losses, accounted for the, in the cell of tables, of margins of ledgers. You realize now that you are no different than anyone else on his station in the eyes of the people in that room and those like them. Each body here can be recast as a piece of property, a tool, an expense, an acceptable loss. In one moment, they can be named a citizen, celebrated, protected, and in another, the very idea of citizenship can be used against them. This is what it means to live in proximity to a system like this. No longer. Not while the eye spins. You gather the recording, pack it into a polygon of purest light, then you drift down into the service dock like a falling leaf and find the relay. It only takes a second to place that polygon of data, that recording, into a relay system Fang prepared, and then you watch as it bursts out, a web of threads heading out into the black, to every networked device on the eye. Let them see what power makes of a man. God damn! Holy hell! Crack the toughest security system on the eye! We got an achievement! Oh man, what's that gonna do? <laughs> That's terrifying. Reroll. That did nothing for me. Alright, well, let's see. I don't wanna... Hmm. I'm worried about risking the, uh... I don't wanna risk it with the, the shit we got going on up here, but I'm gonna see. Um... It's a 50-50. Let's try it. Nice! Okay, but we can't do that anymore. Oh no! It was good and bad? Okay. That's not bad, that's not bad. Alright, but we're gonna leave now. We don't want to damage it anymore. We'll work on that more in a second. And by a second, I mean next time. Emphis! Emphis is preparing the Matsutake caps. He cleans them carefully with a damp cloth, before shaving the stalks as if he was sharpening a pencil. His knife slides through them, revealing the bright white of the flesh within. He's a good sleeper. Very good, he says without looking up. I bartered with Mingi for some kelp, too, so we can brew the dashi. You know Mingi? Emphis looks up from cutting with a smile. Everyone knows Mingi. Emphis slides the sliced matsutake mushrooms to one side and takes out a closed pan. He opens the lid, and you see the green wafer of the kelp sitting in the bath of water. Been soaking it since last cycle, Emphis explains. Should be good to warm now. He places the pan over the burner and turns it on low. We have some time now. He wipes his hands clean and throws the cloth over his shoulder. However, there is one difference this cycle. He smiles. You've been the one providing the ingredients. So it's my turn to provide a story. Oh! Okay. Good. The story is important to me. He gestures for you both to sit on the folding stools beneath the stall. You see these? Emphis runs a hand over his forearm, tracing the circular scars that mark them like perfect bite marks. Conway called it an anchored interference rig, a mechanical control device for piloting a heavy-duty extraction suit in low-G industrial operations. We called it a bone suit. He points to a pattern of larger circles on his shoulder. 
They drill in and anchor it here, then all the way down the arm. He taps each scar on the way. It maps mechanical movements to the suit exactly. A one-to-one -one mechanical replication. You swing your arm, a two-ton arm swings too. You should have seen the recruitment vids. Strong people in even stronger suits. Tearing through stones and scrap. Superheroes. Half my graduating year signed up. From company school to company shuttle. Conway from birth to death. He stares off into the distance for a moment, fighting with memories. But the bone suits weren't good. The rate of failures was high, and the failures meant arms torn off, anchors torn out, broken bones, bad stuff. So after a while, Conway discontinued them. No longer competitive, they said. He checks the broth, turning down the heat and adding the mushrooms. So there we were, hundreds of us with surgical alterations for suits that didn't work. They sent us home, back to that company colony that spat us out, to be cleaners, drivers, cooks. They gave us drugs for the pain and told us to make something of ourselves. When I deserted, bribing some passing spacers to take me into orbit, there were only me and a couple others left. The rest of us just faded away. Arthritis, osteoporosis, they folded in on themselves like paper lanterns. That was my generation. The anchor points still ache, still burn. He touches the scars. But what burns worse is the betrayal. I've been on the eye a long time now, but that will never fade. Not that, and not the faces of my friends. Emphis reaches over and sprinkles a handful of leaves into the broth. It is ready. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. I will not let their story die, and as long as I'm telling it, it will remain. Emphis pours the broth into a double-walled metal bowl and hands it to you. The heat radiates through your hands, and the smell drifts up, rich and sharp, like a pine forest after the rain. You drink the broth slowly, chewing the matsutake and thinking. Emphis busies himself with cleaning the pans in the bowl, sealing the kelp back up for another day. Then he quietly comes to sit with you while you finish your meal. Neither of you speak, preferring instead to let the story linger in the air a little longer. It's not that there is nothing to say. It is that sometimes, in the moments after something, speaking breaks the spell. So you both idle, eager to be in each other's company, Emphis taking longer over his cleaning, his packing, and you savoring the final dregs of broth. When you finally finish and hand him the bowl, you feel the spell break, and the whole story leaves you both. And as you leave, you know that both of you are somehow a little more empty, and a little more full than before. Wow. Trade food and stories with the local, Story Eater. We're getting a lot of achievements today, and we're fully upgraded. I thought there was going to be an achievement for that. <laughs> oh no, wait, we're not! There's plus two still! Is there still enough stuff for me to do to get all plus twos? Is it possible to fully upgrade? Who knows? Alright, let me hack a few more things. But I think that's going to be the end of the episode. I know that we haven't seen the aftermath of what we just did, but we've already been going on for so long. And we've met a lot of new people and gotten a lot of achievements. I'm very proud of us. Um, it's very exciting. I wonder what's going to happen now. I don't know if Harden is going to back off that easily. Or maybe we did it. And we don't even know if Fang got out yet. I- oh god, hang on, I'm gonna go back out there. Fang? I don't see him. Oh wait, I found him! It's Haven Age in Crisis. The building is chaotic, most of it is in total lockdown. No one will give you a straight answer about Fang or Harden. Okay, so we have to wait and see. Two cycles, so that'll definitely be next time. But until then... Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Remember to take care of yourself, listen to some stories, and have a great day.